after falling in from the previous room, my view of room 5 was from the back, looking up at the ceiling. What I saw didn't scare me, it simply surprised me. Trees had grown into the room and towered above my head. The ceilings in this room were taller than the others, which made me think that I was in the center of the house, or whatever it was. I got up off the floor, dusted myself off, and took a look around. It was definitely the biggest room of them all. I couldn't even see the door from where I was. Various brush and trees must have blocked my line of sight with the exit. Up to this point, I figured the rooms were just going to get scarier, but this was a paradise compared to the last room. I also assumed whatever was in room 4 stayed back there. I was incredibly wrong. As I made my way deeper into the room, I began to hear what one would hear if they were in a forest. Chirping bugs and the occasional flap of birds seemed to be the only company I had in this room. But that was the thing that bothered me the most. I heard the bugs and the other animals, but I didn't see any of them. I began to wonder how big this house was. From the outside when I first walked into it, it looked like a regular house. It was definitely on the bigger side, but this was almost a full forest in here. The canopy covered my view of the ceiling, but I assumed it was still there, however high it was. I couldn't see any walls either. The only way I knew I was still inside was that the floor matched the other rooms, the same dark wood paneling. I kept walking though, hoping that the next tree I passed would reveal the door. After a few moments of walking, I felt a few mosquitoes land on my arm. I shook them off and kept going. A second later, I felt about ten more land on my skin, all at different places. I felt them crawl up and down my arms and legs, and a few made their way across my face. I flailed wildly to get them all off, but they just kept crawling. I looked down, and I couldn't help but let out a muffled scream. Not one bug was on me, but I could feel them all crawling simultaneously. I heard them fly by my face and sting my skin, but I couldn't see a single one. I dropped to the ground and began to roll wildly. I was desperate. I hated bugs, especially the ones I couldn't see or touch. But these bugs could touch me, and they were everywhere. I began to crawl. I had no idea where I was going, but I knew the entrance was somewhere. However, it was nowhere in sight, and I still hadn't even seen it. So I just crawled, my skin wringling with the pressure of those phantom bugs. And what seemed like hours later, I finally found the door. I grabbed the nearest tree and propped myself up, mindlessly crawling and dealing with whatever it was that was on me. I took a few shaky steps to the door, grabbing each tree on the way for support. It was only a few feet away when I heard it. The low hum from before. It was coming from the next room, and it was deeper. I could almost feel it inside my body. Like when you stand next to an amp at a concert. I could feel it shaking in my bones. The feeling of the bugs on me lessened as the hum grew louder. As I placed my hand on the doorknob, the bugs were completely gone, but I couldn't bring myself to turn the knob. I knew that if I let go, the bugs would return, and there was no way I would make it back to room 4. So I just stood there, my head pressed against the door, marked 6, and my hand shakily grasping the knob. The hum was so loud, I couldn't even hear myself pretend to think. There was nothing I could do but move on. Room 6 was next. And room 6 was hell. I closed the door behind me. My eyes held shut and my ears still ringing. The hum was surrounding me. As the door clicked into place, the hum was gone. I opened my eyes in surprise and the door I had shut was gone. It was just a wall now. I looked around in shock. The room was identical to room 3. The same chair and lamp, but with the correct amount of shadows this time. The only real difference was that there was no exit door. 
and the one I came in through was gone. As I said before, I had no previous issues in terms of mental instability, but at that moment, I fell into what I know was insanity. I didn't scream. I couldn't. I couldn't make a sound. I knew the door was somewhere, though. I just knew it had to be, so I scratched at where the doorknob originally was. I clawed at the wall frantically with both hands, my nails being filed down to the skin against the wood. I fell silently to my knees. The only sound in the room was the incessant scratching against the wall. I knew it was there. The door had to be there. I just knew it. I knew if I could just get past this wall I- Are you alright? I jumped off the ground and spun in one motion. I leaned against the wall behind me and saw what it was that spoke to me. To this day, I regret ever turning around. There was a little girl. She was wearing a soft white dress that went down to her ankles. Long black hair to the middle of her back and white skin and blue eyes. She was the most frightening thing I had ever seen. And I know that nothing in my life will ever be as unnerving as what I saw in her. While looking at her, I saw something else. Where she stood, I saw what looked like a man's body, only larger than normal and covered in black hair. He was stripped from head to toe, but his head was not human and his toes were hooves. It wasn't the devil but at that moment it might as well have been. The form had the head of a ram and the snout of a wolf. It was horrifying, and it was synonymous with the little girl in front of me. They were the same form. I can't really describe it, but I saw them at the same time. They shared the same spot in that room but it was like looking at two separate dimensions. When I saw the girl, I saw the form, and when I saw the form, I saw the girl. When it spoke, I heard the words of the little girl, but the other form spoke through my mind in a voice I won't attempt to describe. You should have listened, David. You should have listened. There was no other sound. The voice just kept repeating that sentence you should have listened, over David. and over in my mind. And I agreed. You should have listened, David. I didn't know what to do. You should have listened. I was slipping into madness. You should have listened, David. Yet couldn't take my eyes off of what was in front of me. You should have listened. I dropped you to the floor. You should have listened, I thought I'd David. passed out. You, you should have listened. listened. But the room listened, wouldn't let David. me. You should have listened. I just wanted it to end. You should have listened, David. I was on my listened, side, David. my eyes you wide open, listened. and the you form listened, staring David. down at me. You should have listened. Scurrying across you the floor in front of me was one of the battery powered listened. rats from the second you room. Listened. You should the house listened. was toying with me. You should have listened. But I didn't think that it was the end. Seeing that toy rat, I was able to pull my mind back together. I knew this room was hell, but I wasn't about to take up a residency. I looked up to face my pursuer. But instead, I found mercy in the sign of a rectangle, with the scratches I left behind on the walls. I created, literally clawed, a rectangle out of the wooden wall. I stumbled to my feet, 
attempting to avoid the voices that rang inside my head. And then I opened the door. Room 7. There was nothing. And I don't mean that to trick you. I mean I was outside. I finally left the no-end house. If you really want to know how I work, then you might want to listen. What scares me is what scares you, too. Because we're all afraid of the same things. And that's why horror is such a powerful genre. All you have to do is ask yourself, what frightens you? And you'll know what frightens me. Leave on the lights. It's still after dark.